nobody up in the air. And when every lands, I'm sorry. I gotta mess you up. So, so, so that's, that's, that's not rightly dividing. So let me give I wanna give us a few tips right now about rightly dividing. And I wanna, I'm gonna give us one quick example in service, but I want to explore it further in Bible study after service today and also on Tuesday. How, how do we rightly divide? I wanna give us four WHs to go back in. So we already talked about this. In order to understand the content, we have to understand the what? So to take content out of context is never the way to rightly divide the word. That's wrong to divide. So I need you to understand like, what's, what's going on around this verse to help me understand this verse in its entirety. So let me give you four WHs about how we go back out here to rightly divide. It says right here, we shouldn't be ashamed as workmen rightly dividing the word of truth. And what I would offer is that sometimes believers have wrongly divided because we've been accepting what other folks say. Just because somebody been saved longer than us doesn't mean we can't, that they know everything. Just because, so our role is to say, I need to get into the word for myself and then see with what I'm hearing and what I'm experiencing lines up with that word. So let me give you four WHs very quickly. First of all, to, un to write the divide, you got to understand who. Who is speaking and to whom? Sometimes we make it seem like just because it's in the Bible, it's like Jesus already said it. Well, did Jesus did he say that? And, and, and some things he said in the red, do you do? He, in the, the, walk, live if you want to, following just the red. Jesus said in the red that if you lust after a woman, pluck out your eyes and cut off your hand. There's a whole lot of bosom in here. got both eyes and both hands. So living in the red and mess you up now. So be real clear. So to be clear. So you got to say who is speaking and to whom. Because I got to be real clear about, oh, this is a verse for some sister suit now, but to be very real clear about who is the one that's speaking and to whom is he speaking. If I want to write it and I got to know who's talking and to whom. Well, here's the next one right here. When was it written? B.C. or A.D.? Under the law or under grace? We, 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 everybody knows that from 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Yes, my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Well, Old Testament, you had to do for God to do. New Testament, God already did, so now we just think, oh. Old Testament was about behavior. What's New Testament about? Belief. Belief. So Old Testament, oh yeah, we love the, the Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. We're blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when we come, blessed when we go, that's when you stand up, that's when you sit down. And we love verses 1 through 14. But then it's but it all predicates as if you do what God said to do. Then verse 15, second, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28. But if you don't do what God said to do, curse will you be in the city. Curse will you be in the field. Curse will you be when you come. Curse will you be when you go. So the idea we love 1 through 14, but you guys said can't decide, I'm just going to take the one I like. So the idea of Old Testament, if, if I'm trying to live my life based on the Old Testament, that God responded based on what people did, instead of now New Testament, we respond based on what Jesus did. So now I'm not trying to do something to please God. Now I'm believing God, and in turn as I believe him, I know I'm righteous. The Old Testament, they tried to have behavior to please God. Now we have belief to please God. Now we live under grace. Live under grace. So what does that mean? That means that when something comes up, Old Testament, they're always trying to go back and make God happy and always trying to please him and trying to be righteous and always fell short of the mark. Now, because of what Jesus did, God, I thank you so much for what Jesus did, that now I accept what you've already done. I accept that I'm righteous. I accept that I'm raised. I accept that I'm redeemed. Instead of oh, old, old Testament, they were trying to get righteous and trying to be redeemed and trying to be raised. Now, because of what Jesus did, it's just a matter of accepting what Jesus has already done. Here's the next WH. Why? Why was this verse written? And why was it shared? What's the, what was the point behind it? And here's our last WH. I want to take a look. Oh, this, uh, read this with me, please. Under why? How people acted and how God responded. Or how God acted and how people responded. 
Again, Old Testament, people did, if they did right, they got what? Right. right. If they did wrong, they got what? Wrong. New Testament, Jesus said at this point that I'm going to take your judgment. I'm going to take your sins. I'm going to take your shortcomings. And all I need you to do is to behold and I will transform. And instead of always trying to live by 613 laws, I need you now, according to Romans 7, 6, to live by the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Be sensitive to God's movement. Be sensitive when he says call somebody. Be sensitive when he says go visit somebody. Be sensitive when he says go pray for somebody. That, that, that's how we're living instead of always going through and, and going at the end of the day, going down to everything you did wrong all day long and wonder why you're going to be depressed. So the idea is always about how God acted and how God responded. So here's the last one right here. What was the topic of the verse? That's the question we got to ask. We're going to go through these four and box and much more. But what's the topic? So let me just give us one example very quickly. I want to give us one example about how our, our study is enhanced by way of looking at these four WHs. We talked about already the, the who, the idea of when, the why, and then back, back to who. Tell me about, talk about talk about, what around grace time, we're talking about so people say grace, Jesus wept. Folks don't know when he wept, why he wept, just Jesus wept. Trying to get on to the food. You know the food, food, food smelling good. Uh, Jesus well. Well, I got to understand a little bit more about what was going on about why he wept. So the idea, so, so then here's the point. So the what? What was the topic? What's the topic? What's the subject of the verse? I'm going to give you one, one example here. Read this verse with me, please, from John 32, John 12, 32. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. How many have ever heard that verse before? So what does that mean? What, 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 have, we, what, have, we, what have we thought that about verse meant? That when Jesus lifted up in our lives, he's going to draw everybody unto him. And, and, and that basically what we can't talk to this point? Yeah. 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 Y'all know it's wrong, so don't be talking about that. Now, I never thought that. I don't know what it was. I know, I know, I know you brought it up because it must be wrong. So we never thought that. Now let's talk about how we now study the word. First of all, what what word up there looks a little different than what you've seen? Look up there. Look, look, as, 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 a, as Rafiki would say to a symbol, look harder. Look, 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 what is that? What, which, one, which, which, which word? Huh? What's the difference between men and the other verses? Italicized. Hmm. So whenever we are reading the word, it means that was not, if it's italicized, it means it was not part of the original text that somebody later added it to try to provide clarity. But it wasn't part of the original. So if you really want to study the word, what well, we really go back in and we leave out the italicized and understand at this point what the topic was about. Now let's read this without men in there. Let's read it together. Now, and I, if I, be lifted up from the earth, will draw all unto me. Well, look, so look what happens now. So if in fact... Lifting up Jesus draws everybody unto him. Why that folk across the field right now playing soccer instead of in church? He been lifted up. He was lifted up. On that cross, he was lifted up. Now the question was, he was lifted up. So the implication here is that when he's lifted up, everybody's going to come. And we know everybody's not coming. Y'all know some folk at home that didn't come. So the idea, everybody's not being drawn to him. So the idea here then is, we'll draw all unto me. All right. So what's the first word right here? What's the first word? Now, the really real study word. What's the first word in verse 32? What's and mean? Yeah. So you just can't pick up a, you can't call some angelic. <laughs> and implies something preceded it. And something came back. And it's the tandem that makes it special. So I just can't look at this one verse. Now here's the point. Mr. Now, this is true. While, while this is true, the last part says that Jesus said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. That is true. That's not all this verse means. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all unto me. Well, this is, we got to go back to verse 31. Let's read this together. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. 
And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. What does verse 1 say the subject here? What's the topic? What's the, third, the third, fourth word here? Judgment. So what he is saying here, that when I'm lifted up, I'm going to draw all the judgment that should have gone on you all. I'm going to put it on me. So that in turn, you don't have to be judged by the Lord. Come on now. Then I'm going to draw all the judgment and all the pain and all the suffering and all the sin. I'm going to draw all that unto me because I'm lifted up. I'm hanging from that cross so that you can live. I'm going to die, Jesus said, so you can live. So I'm going to draw all the, all the anger God had against you coming on me, Jesus said. All the wrath Jesus had, uh, God had for you uh, on me. All the frustration he had, all that's unto me. So that now you can be free. So now what happens now? So this we spent a whole month last year talking about imputation. So what happens? What happens? Our sins have now been imputed to Jesus. And when God sees us, what does he see? Righteousness. Come on now. Our sins. Our sins have been credited to Jesus. And then his righteousness credited to us. So when he says, when I'm lifted up, that when I'm lifted up, when I'm down on that cross, that now at this point, all judgment from the world is now unto me. So that now that you don't have to go back and face the condemnation that would have come. All the judgment, all, all the anger, all the fury, all the rage that God had against humankind. Jesus says, I'm willing to allow that to come on me so that you can be free. Didn't it make a whole lot of difference? All judgment, I will draw all judgment, all men's judgment unto me. This idea of imputation. So I told y'all, we went over here to, as an example here, we talked about imputation. That on, that, that those imputation here, charging to what? Another's account. That when you charge something, I told you, when we went out with Kitty on her 50th birthday, went up here to Olive Garden. I still don't understand what y'all got in got Olive Garden. They, they the flowers out. Everybody wanted to go to Olive Garden. So nothing wrong with Olive Garden. I'm just saying there's some other restaurants in town. So we get up over there and Kitty Cat had on her little knee out, little, little, little leopard things. Had a little, 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 she had a little kitty, had a little leopard flashlights. And so we were out there and, you know, and so, and so, and it was just, just a handful out there. And so we had ordered getting ready to go. And we said at this point, we said, is there one thing else? The, wait the waitress came with one thing else. And then all about we could look. So then my wife turned to Kitty and said, uh, oh yeah, we, we got you. Everything that you're gonna eat is on us. Kitty said, let's see another menu, please. So the idea because it was not gonna be charged to her account. So there's also imputation. You can't have righteousness and sin on the same account. You can't have on the same account. So we, we, before Jesus, sin was on our account. And now as a result of what we have for imputation, we see here from our verse here that his righteousness is now on our account. So when God looks at us now, he doesn't see our sins. All he sees is the righteousness of the Lord. Come on, y'all, to give God a hand kind of praise because of imputation there, imputation. So, this idea, so, so our studying then, our study is enhanced. So this is the question we're going to deal with in Bible study right here uh, in, by, this afternoon and also on Sunday. Read this with me, please. Does God hear the prayers of sinners? All right, we'll see. All right, so we're going to talk about that in Bible study. So then, man, that's, that's, that's kind of like a little clipped episode, like who shot JR? So the idea is so sinners should have self approved. Work need not be ashamed, right in the back, real truth. And lastly, what God does, our uh, transformation lastly does, it enhances not only our standing, it enhances our studying, but watch this, it also enhances our stretching. Don't think because we've been transformed, life is going to always be easy. Don't think it's because we've been transformed that everything will always go the way you want it to go. That part of transformation means I'm willing to be stretched out of a comfort zone. See, everybody wants to, see, if you really, if, if we're all honest, we all want to be comfortable. Amen. We go, we go to work tomorrow to get some money so we can be comfortable. Go into uncomfortable work environments so that we can live comfortably. And God is not concerned about your comfort. God is not concerned about us being comfortable. He is concerned about us being conformable. I said he's not concerned about us being comfortable. He's concerned about us being conformable. 
I say God is not, not concerned about us being comfortable. He's 